வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் டீஜெனரேஷன் அண்ட் ரீஜெனரேஷன் ஆஃப்டர் நர்வ் இன்ஜுரி When a nerve is injured, it undergoes a process of degeneration. What are the steps by which this degeneration occurs? We shall now see the changes that occur in the injured nerve, the process of degeneration. Once the axon is transected, degeneration of the nerve occurs. Changes take place at three different levels. When there is an injury to the axon, leading to the disruption of the axon completely, the changes that occur distal to this level of disruption is known as the Wallerian degeneration. The axon first becomes swollen, irregular and then breaks down into small fragments. This debris that results from the breakdown of the axon is digested by the tissue macrophages. By this process, the entire distal axon is destroyed within a week. The myelin sheath, on the other hand, is converted to lipid droplets which are extruded from the Schwann cell. These lipid droplets are also phagocytosed. One set of degenerative changes proceeds proximally from the site of disruption of the axon to the proximal node. This is referred to as the traumatic degeneration. And the third set of degenerative changes occurs in the cell body in a process called chromatolysis. This diagram represents the major changes that occur in the cell body. The swelling of the cell, the pushing of the nucleus to the periphery. All the degeneration changes that we have seen occur within a specific time frame. Within 24 hours, there is a fragmentation of the distal axon. Within 10 days, the myelin sheath breaks up into lipid droplets around the axon and macrophage attraction occurs. Within a month, the myelin gets denatured chemically and within 3 months, the Schwann cells proliferate and form the bands of Bugner. In the motor end organs, progressive muscle atrophy and degeneration occurs. When there is a degeneration of the motor end plates, it will be unable to re -innervate. When there is a permanent loss of muscle fibers over time, poor function after re will result. When the muscle itself is replaced by fatty and fibrous tissues, it may result in joint contractures. There is another process called nerve regeneration where the nerve is able to grow on its own. How does this occur? And what are the factors that affect this nerve regeneration? Along with the degeneration that is occurring, there is also a process of regeneration of the axon that has been cut. This process was described in detail by Kajal in 1926. The cut axon starts growing in the following way. Pseudopodia-like extensions start developing from the proximal cut end of the nerve. These fibrils start moving towards the distal cut end of the nerve fiber. It then enters the neurilemmal tube which has been formed by the Schwann cells which have lined up to guide the fibrils into the tube. When the growing axon enters the neurilemmal tube, it is called as the axis cylinder. This occurs about 3 months after the injury to the axon. Once the axis cylinder is formed, the Schwann cells start the process of myelination which is completed in about a year. The diameter of the nerve fiber gradually increases. At the same time, in the cell body, the nissle granules reappear, then the Golgi apparatus appears, the cell loses the excess fluid that had accumulated during the process of chromatolysis and the nucleus that had moved to the periphery comes back to the central portion. This process of nerve regeneration is a very delicate one and it can be affected by many factors. They are broadly classified into the general factors, the type and site of the lesion on the nerve, the timing of the repair of the nerve, the coaptation technique and the biomolecular factors. We shall see just two of these biomolecular factors causing the effects of neurotrophism and neurotropism. To understand neurotrophism, we consider 
the mixed nerve which has been injured. The fascicles that grow out from this nerve can be motor fascicles or sensory fascicles and it is important that the motor fascicles from the proximal end reach the motor fascicles in the distal end for good re of the muscles and similarly for the sensory fascicles. The neurotrophic factors ensure that the proximal motor fascicles that develop reach only the motor fascicles on the distal cut end and they are allowed to grow. When the motor fascicles from the proximal nerve reach the sensory fascicles, they are inhibited by a process of pruning. The second type of factors are the neurotropic factors. These factors ensure that the axons sprouting from the proximal nerve reach only the distal cut end of the nerve and not any other structure in the vicinity like the tendon.